Hello, everyone. Welcome to our final exit interview of our all-star season. I am joined by one of my co-hosts, Ian Moorhead, here to talk with our guest, Mike Simmons, the winner of this season. <laughs> yeah. And then as always, except for last one and last time, Lily's back here with the exits. So <clears throat> let's crack into it <laughs> um before lily starts i have just some questions for you on the with the marooning because you had some familiar faces uh when you joined the zoom call so let's start with zucker what were your thoughts when you saw zucker on the zoom call i think my initial reaction was hmm, could have been worse <laughs> um i i was excited to see him because I like Zucker I, I you know I, I think we could play well together but left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth from Exile Island um, just with how things kind of ended I think he was playing me a little bit we could have actually worked together but um, it just didn't work out but like I said could have been a lot a couple other people that would have been worse so I was excited to have a chance to to maybe talk to him I was hoping we were going to be on the same tribe but just didn't work out Andrew was on the same tribe as you. How was it seeing him? Because you sort of were able to talk to him a little bit in uh, in exile. So Andrew. Yeah, I mean, so I know like a lot of people like were doing their research saying like, oh, I think this person's playing. I think this person's playing. I had no idea who was playing. So like coming in there, seeing Andrew, it was like, OK, awesome. Like, I know I can work with Andrew. I actually had a chance to meet him uh, after our season a couple months later down the line. Um, we have a couple of different ties that tie him back to my hometown. So it was just kind of a, a small world situation, but had a chance to meet him in real life. And I was like, okay, I can work with Andrew. I know we can make it work. The way he plays these games sometimes can make it a little bit tough. Uh, he likes to play a little bit of the middle game. So sometimes he, you know, you tell him something, he runs to somebody else and tells them, but I think it's all out of uh, good play for himself. So can't really knock it, but I was definitely excited to have Andrew there. And I was looking forward to hopefully, you know, going pretty far with him, which kind of worked out. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course, Austin Moorhead, who both of you said in your pregame interviews, I want Mike Simmons. I want Austin Moorhead. We need redemption. So when you saw him there, <laughs> I, in my head, I said, I'm not messing this up again. <laughs> uh, I, I think I ruined my game or at least my chance at winning the last game by voting him out. I mean, Lily and, and Austin <laughs> would still be doing that challenge according to Ian um, at, at final three, but I, I was definitely excited to see Austin. He's the one person I wanted to see there for sure. Um, I wanted to have a little bit of a, a revenge game with him and, and hopefully uh, make the right decisions with him down the line if we got there. So definitely the number one person that could have been there was there. Yeah. And so your reputation from Exile Island, if anybody has seen it, which you're lucky some of these castaways did not, but what was what were your thoughts going into this season? Because if they had watched your season, you've got a target. Yeah, I mean, I assumed people did, which... I guess wasn't the right assumption, but um, I mean, quite honestly, I haven't seen every single season, but I did watch your guys recaps and stuff like that. So I at least had an idea of what was going on, but, you know, I assumed that people thought that I was obviously a challenge threat, but it seemed to be like, that was really all people kind of thought. Like it, it seemed like people just thought, Oh, Simmons challenge beast, Simmons challenge beast. It's like, okay, that kind of put a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. Like, I'm a little bit more than that. I'm a little bit of a better player than that. I think I showed that in my last game. Um, you know, I, I only received one vote all game. And you saw in this season, I received no more than one vote at three different tribal councils when the vote didn't really even matter. Um, so I think that's a testament to like my social game and my strategic game. But I think people only kind of saw me as the challenge guy. And, you know, it, that is what it is. That's perception. That's that is what people think. And I'm glad that I was kind of maybe able to help shift that narrative a little bit. But I, I think early on in the game, it was like, OK, some people just think I'm good at challenges. That's fine. Um, I'm not really worried about that until I get to the merge. If I get to the merge, um, 
because I think I'm an asset to my tribe at that point. But that that was definitely something I was trying to downplay, um, depending on who watched my game and how many people watched it and what people were saying about it, I think was going to dictate how I played. Yeah. Um, so you said you watched the recaps. Uh, was there anybody of note when you were watching the recaps that you were like, oh, I'd like to see them or, oh, crap, they're on this season? Actually, I don't know that I said like, oh, I hope this person's there. Oh, yes, this person's here. It was more of like, okay, Karen's a winner. She's very good. And the other person I remembered was Kylie. I was like, okay, I know Kylie's good at this game and she's definitely a threat down the line, but I thought it was someone that I could work with at some point. Um, Those are the two that I think that kind of stuck out a little bit as people maybe uh, that I noted from that. Awesome. All right, Lily, your turn. (laughs) All right. Well, I think one relationship that we saw a lot in the game that we haven't gotten to yet is Maddie. I mean, you guys are on your original tribe together. It seems like you just click. But again, we don't see a lot of what happens in pre-merge because it's a long game style. So there's just it's too much to show. So how did you guys like form this tight bond? Because it really was you guys weren't always voting together but you protected each other pretty well. So how did that happen? I, it was literally that first night and we were in our group Zoom call. And I just remember, you know, reading the room a little bit, seeing kind of feeling things out. And I noticed that Maddie was a little bit quiet. Danny was a little bit quiet. Um, and at that point they were kind of chiming in a little bit, kind of weren't. And at that point I was like, I, I kind of like the vibe I'm getting from them. They're not trying to be too much. It, it's, I don't know what it was, but I was kind of like, okay, I'm going to shoot them both a message while we're in this Zoom call. And and I sent them both both a message and it kind of worked out that I didn't even, it didn't even click in my head at the time, at the time, because it was so early on, I didn't get a chance to like, look at my little note sheet of who was on whose season that Danny and Maddie were playing together. I mean, off the first 20 minutes, I was like, okay, I like both these people turned out to be that they both were willing to play with each other. Um, But I mean, really, it's just kind of the person that Maddie was. Um, and then I got to figure out pretty quickly that, okay, she's pretty level-headed. She makes good decisions for the most part. Um, you know, I, unlike her brother, um, John. I was just going to say, did the Millsip name influence anything in your decision? Well, maybe a little bit. Cause I said, you know what, John's pretty good at these games, huh? Like she, she's probably, she has something, she has some kind of knowledge, um, obviously, but, um, I think it was just our personalities that kind of mixed pretty well. It, it was it was like a little mix of being able to play the game strategically, have a little bit of fun, and, and still be social. Um, that made it pretty easy for us to connect, especially on the first couple nights. Yeah, I mean, and, and we see it go all the way to final tribal. So it's only it's always nice to see those like pre merge relationships. I mean, it really was your pre-merge game really set you up for success i thought after the merge but a lot a big difference between this game and the last time we saw you exile was your tribe pre-merge went to tribal a lot which didn't really happen in exile and you know we see you go through the feelings of why do we suck but then you don't vote out the people that quote unquote sucked at the challenge so how do you navigate having to go to tribal a lot pre-merge and still keep these relationships that you're not always voting with strong enough after the merge yeah that's that's a good question um i think obviously your vote is what tells each other and tells the other people like who your allies are. Um, but I think it was the constant communication, especially with like Maddie and Austin, that, that kind of was like the reassurance, like, yeah, I left Maddie out of the Danny vote, but it was the feelings that she was kind of giving to me and how she was talking to me and how I was talking to her that I was like, okay, if I leave her out of this vote super early on, I think we'll be able to recover from it. Um, and you know, luckily that, that, that happened, but you know, I felt comfortable and I know that's weird to say in in survivor terms, but like I pre-merged with the tribe that we had and the dynamic that we had, I was at least pretty comfortable that I wasn't going to go home based on my relationships and and the people I was talking to. And I felt like I was at least an asset in terms of challenges. So, you know, yeah, we might not have taken out the people that weren't great at challenges, but I, as frustrated as I was at the time that we were losing, um, 
ultimately it was better because it kept my allies close. We voted together multiple times, um, something that the other tribe at the time wasn't going through. They weren't going through the the trials and tribulations of we have to go to tribal. We have to figure out, draw the lines in the sand where people are at. Um, so I think ultimately that actually kind of helped us getting into the merge situation and the swap. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I, we hear Maddie a lot saying, I'm going to loyalty the crap out of Simmons. What, could you feel that she was trying to like force that on you or did it feel more natural where it kind of left like a subconscious, oh, Maddie's loyal, Maddie's loyal? Um, Probably a little bit of both. I, I mean, it's no secret to anybody that's watched Exile that I played a pretty loyal game. I, I stuck with my same three yeah we had a couple times here and there but it's a 39 day game you know what i mean but at the end of the day when you go to final four final five with four of the people that you talked to on day one and made that like commitment like that's pretty loyal so i i think i'm a pretty loyal player so unless you unless you break me i'm not gonna break you so she was giving me reasons not to like turn my back on her and yeah, she was being loyal to me the whole time. And, and at that point, it's like, okay, she's loyal to me. I'm loyal to you. We're good. Um, and and like I said, you know, I I didn't come into the game thinking, oh, I'm going to play like a really loyal game. I'm going to do exactly what I did last time. Um, I, I came in thinking like, I want to be able to adapt to any situation that came up. If I had to play from the bottom and, and you know, start causing a commotion and making some snaky moves i would have loved to do that that's more fun mm -hmm. um but with the cards that i was dealt in the hand that ended up happening i had to play what was in front of me and and that was to play a little bit quieter a little bit loyal um and just find my way getting through the votes if i would have said oh i need to build this big resume i need to get out so and so i need to have these big moves i would have been out like that doesn't really work like that um especially in these types of games in an all-star game where you know, there's pre-existing games where people are looking at like, okay, this person is pretty good already. Um, so I was just trying to lower my threat level, but yeah, I hope that answered your question. I don't remember what it was at this point. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, another thing that was really interesting about All-Stars is there was a lot more twists than we might normally see. And a lot of them come from previous games. We see Exile come up. We see the High Rollers room and how... How do you make those decisions, especially with the quick turns like Exile on I'm going to go for it or I'm not going to go for it like High Rollers Room? How did that impact your game? I mean, we see it impact your relationships as well, but also that. Yeah, I, honestly, I think Exile did kind of set me up pretty nicely for this because there were some twists and turns. Like, I mean, the whole Exile thing in itself is one advantage. There was multiple advantages on Exile. There was multiple swaps. Um, so I, I just remember thinking when you guys, you know, we went to the first swap here on all stars, I was like, oh, damn it. Like I hate swaps. So like, you can get screwed. Like it's going to be the worst. It ended up not being the worst, but like, I'm not a big fan of twists because I was so like, com I don't come, I keep using the word comfortable, but like, I was so like well insulated where I was. Like, I was like, let's just keep going to the merge. We're good. Um, but then the swap happened. And again, the way that the swap folded out, it was in, you know, my best interest. You know, I had multiple allies on that, on that side, um, had a couple options, but, you know, navigating the twists and the turns, sometimes you can't really account for, but it's kind of just how you respond to them. You know, if you just lay down and die, or if you say, oh, you know, I'm screwed, just kind of keep playing your game, keep chugging along, do what you have to do, play what's in front of you and, you know, make the best decision that you think it is at the time. Well, I think I think a uh, mark. Uh, sorry, Michael. I think a mark of like a uh, like a, a between like a good player and a better player is someone who can adapt, like regardless of the situation. I think what you said earlier about adapting on like day one is like what most good players do. I mean, I think everyone that we brought into All Stars was like willing to come in, see the cast, and then pick their game or decide how they're going to play based on that. But yeah, I think the the mark, I mean, there's obviously everyone here is a good player, but there's certain players that played at a higher level this season than than others. So I think all of those people would be grouped into like adapting at the swap, adapting at the next swap, adapting at the merge. Um yeah, it's just like all those all those steps. You can't just 
adapt once and then, you know, hope for everything to stay the same because it's never going to. So, yeah. yeah I, I mean, agree. there was one twist to the game that just highly, highly benefited you <laughs> when uh, you vote out Austin Garzo and you realize they're coming back and you see Austin Moorhead is swapping to your tribe. And that reunion between the two of you is amazing. <laughs> I kind of forgot about that twist. I just assumed, I was like, oh yeah, Austin was on my tribe. No, he was voted out and yeah. sw switched to my tribe. So yeah, that was a huge benefit to my game. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that that was going to hurt you guys both. Like I thought that that like actually was going to screw, screw you. But again, like, like we said, I think I loved how people came in you know, they knew people had played together and other than like the Trinity Falls, which I think regardless of what season it was, if, if it was the most recent game, it would have been the targeted season because they had played together most recently. But I loved how people just came in and like really gave each other a chance in this game, maybe other mm -hmm. than like a couple votes here with the Trinity um, thing. But again, if that was Sahara and that was our most recent game, like Danny and Maddie would have been toast. So yeah. I also think it 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 really and like what you said about like Austin coming over and hurting you. I at first I kind of had that thought, but then realizing that Andrew was on our tribe, Andrew was also there when when Austin and I, you know, Austin and I both were there, met Andrew at the same time. Um, and then having um <clears throat> Maddie, you know, she didn't realize that I was really close with Austin right off the bat. You know, a lot of people didn't know that depending on what kind of tribe you're on, maybe if we were on the other tribe, you know, someone like Jeremy who might know that might try to, you know, flip that around and turn it the wrong way. I don't know, but I think it just depends on, you know, who you're with. But I do think Andrew was probably a big help in that because at the time early on, he was pretty close with like the other people on our tribe, the Lydia's, the Garso's, the Karen's, um, you know, from early on. And it was like me, I was close with Andrew, Maddie and Danny. So like, Andrew kind of helped fill that gap early on where it's like, okay, I trust Andrew enough that he's in the, he's going to make sure my name's not out there. I know he's going to make sure Austin's name's not out there and kind of pivot as necessary. So I, I do think he was a big part in at least helping that. Yeah. And we see this dynamic with Andrew. I mean, go on to the merge, right? He helps with the other tribe. You didn't get to see and with, you know, Zucker does the same thing. So how do you navigate getting time with those people in a mini format, you know, that's outside what you're used to. Like how did the mini format of post merge totally flip your game and how, again, did you adapt? <laughs> I hate mini. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. It's the worst. <laughs> you literally won the game. Who cares? I, I, I know. I, I just can't believe people like willingly are like, let's go play a, a 10 hour mini. Like, no, it's, I hated it. Um, it just, it makes it so hard to, to try to make any kind of moves, which is why I think we were so successful because we had the strongest group of people in the game, right? Nobody else was as strong as the three that we had. And even if you want to include Andrew as a pretty tight fourth there, you know, I think that's why, you know, in a fast paced game, where you don't have a chance to talk to somebody one-on-one -on -one at two in the morning, right? Like you just, you don't get that luxury. So I think having that strong group and that strong bond with the people we had pre-merge voted together multiple times, made tough decisions, had to go through it. We're on the swap together and then come to the merge. We felt pretty comfortable that we were going to vote together regardless of what happened. And having three people 100% voting with each other is a lot more certain than where's Garso going to vote? Where's uh, Ashley going to vote? Where's Karen going to vote? Like no one really knew. Um, even, even though they were on the same tribe early on, like they didn't have to draw any lines in the sand until I guess that night of the merge when, you know, stuff started blowing up a little bit, but you know, I, the mini format was tough. I much prefer a long game. I will never play a long game. I've never played <laughs> But I, I just, you know, the long game, you can kind of maneuver a little bit more. You have chances to talk to people and sway their opinion. In a mini, you don't know who's going to come in the door, who's going to go out, how long you have. 
So, I mean, you saw Maddie get caught a couple, get caught once talking about Garso. Garso comes right in. The whole conversation is blown up. Um, and that's, that's the risk that it is. It's fun. It's exciting. But uh, in terms of playing it and the gameplay and trying to make moves, it makes it tough. I think, I think minis, minis are more interesting, like post people having relationships. Like I think the mini that we had this time around, even though it wasn't a full game was so interesting compared to, you know, like, Oh, this person did bad in a challenge. Like we're just, you know, see, ya. um, it's and that's that's just how minis go but that's just like it's it's cool to see every move in a mini you know happen based on something that has structure or something that has foundation um because it it does suck to see those people go like so early when they could they could have won had they you know done something in a challenge differently or yeah. And Lily, you talked about like adapting at the, like at the mini portion. And it's like, you know, that first day we hopped in there and I, I just remember vividly, it was the, the, the scramble started and it was like, Lex is doing one thing. Kylie's doing another thing. Like, okay, everyone's in the same room here and this is happening in front of everybody. Like, okay, this is a little bit different. I'm just going to sit back and relax and kind of let it run its course. Um, because at that point it was only good for me. So it was a different feeling of like, I felt like I was so on the bottom at the merge. Yeah, I had my three and I had some good relationships and good conversations with Karen and Kylie. But at the end of the day, you know, if they really wanted to, they, it would have been so easy to say, let's just vote Simmons. Let's just vote Maddie. Let's just vote Austin. Like, at the end, like if if all that, if, if Kylie and, all, and Lex keep going at it, whatever, and they kind of go off in their own break room and talk it out and say, hey, like, let's not vote each other out. Like, let's not do anything stupid here. They go back to the big room and say, Hey, let's just vote out, you know, Mike or, or Simmons or Austin, or whatever. It would have been pretty easy to do. I think at that point it would have been pretty easy to get the numbers. So I felt like I was on the bottom and could have easily went home. And I I've said it, I should have went home, but I think just letting the mini run its course and, and hoping for the best at that point, because I've never played in a mini. I've never seen what it was like. Didn't really know. Um, so I think just seeing what was in front of me again and just playing it as it came. Yeah. I mean, you navigated it extremely well. And I know something you mentioned earlier was, you know, people only thought of you as a challenge threat, right? People weren't giving you props to your social, but I think this helped you in the merge because we see Kylie, we see Karen, these people want to hide behind your shield, like use you as their shield, I guess is the proper way of saying it, because they think they can outmaneuver you when it's time to cut you. But we see throughout the mini portion, I mean, we talked about it a lot in these exits is, you know, with Kylie, with Garso, with Ashley, we hear them say, you know, we need to get out one of the FUMO three now, and it just never happens. And so I think, I don't know. I think it was really amazing to watch. And I just wanted to know your thoughts on what really you had the strong three, you had a couple relationships, but what prevented one of you guys from going at any time? I mean, these people knew you were a threat and they said, we'll push it down the line. What do you kind of, if you had to say, these are the three reasons why, I guess, if you could, what, what would you credit it to? I, I would say, I agree that me being this this challenge beast that people thought like Karen and Kylie especially like they wanted to keep me around and Karen I mean credit her she she came to me very early on and said that and I I thought about it and I was like you know what that's that's that can work for me um so I mean very early on she made that kind of I don't want to say a deal with me but we kind of mutually agree like we're both good for each other's game so when we got to the merge it was kind of in her best interest, especially with all this going on to keep me because I was voting with her and we were kind of good and she could kind of count on me for a vote. Um, but I think ultimately, I, I do think like there's something to be said about, you know, if you have, if I have a conversation with somebody, I'm pr like an actual, like, Hey, do you want to talk? Do you want to actually like figure this out? Like not necessarily in the mini portion of the game, but like the day before the mini um, where we had time to talk to people, the people that I talked to are the people that actually ended up working with me. You know, Lex didn't really, Lex didn't want to talk to me. Shay didn't want to talk to me. Ashley and I kind of talked a little bit. Garso and I didn't talk. Like I, I firmly believe that like, if I get in a room with you and I'm able to talk to you for a certain amount of time, like 
I can make you want to work with me in some way or the other. Like I might not be the best for your game, but I can give you some kind of reassurance that I'm in some way good for you and can help you. Um, and I think that's kind of what happened with Kylie and, and with Karen. Like, you know, I had a chance to talk to both of them for a long time the night before the merge. And I think just those conversations, it was like, oh, okay. Simmons, you know, people kind of have maybe have some kind of miss, maybe preconceived notion of like who I am and like just from the outside. But like when you actually talk to me, you know, turns out it might be different. And like, oh, I can play with Simmons. He's great. He's fun to play with. He's He knows what he's doing. He's smart. He can be strategic. Um, he's not going to do anything unreasonable. And I think that was kind of a huge, um, you know, idea for like K Kylie, especially to like, okay, that's someone that can really help me out. Who's not going to blow up my game. Um, so I definitely think that is maybe why like my name didn't come up as much in the middle there or why it didn't stick is because there was so many people that were like, well, it's not great for my game. If Simmons goes, Simmons goes home. It wasn't great for Karen if I went home early. It wouldn't have been great for Kylie if I went home before her. Um, now, granted, we voted them both out, but, it, you know, and, you know, maybe I, ideally, maybe it was. But after the Lex vote, after the Shea vote, like they were kind of locked in. You know, they were losing they were losing people to be able to vote me out. So, you know, and especially Maddie and Austin, too. So. I think I hope that answers the question well enough, but I think that's what I would credit it to. Yeah. And I mean, we see your strength in social game because, okay, your physical game got you safety for three rounds and there's five or so other rounds where you were vulnerable. So it's like your social got you safety through those other rounds where you didn't have immunity around your neck. Yeah. And like, I, I don't know why, but in my head, you say challenge beast. I think as someone like Jonathan from Survivor, what what season is that? Like 43 or something? Yeah. 42. 42. It's like, okay, yeah, he was only good at challenges. Like, that's it. Like, he, that's all he's got. And like, his name kept coming up. He's like, oh, he's good at challenge. He kept getting votes. It's like, okay, well, Simmons isn't getting votes. His name's not really coming up that much. So obviously I'm doing something else and I'm doing something right. So that's, at least that's what social game to me. And I think there's, I think I said this to Ian one day, like, what, what is defined as a social game on these orgs and even in real life? Is it, do I know everyone's favorite color? Do I know your best friend in real life? Do I know all this stuff about you? I don't think that's a social game. I think it's being able to communicate with people and getting them not to want to vote for you. So yeah, it's great to make friends and it's great to learn. And, and that's a huge part of the game. But I think being a good social player isn't just saying, oh, I'm friends with all these people. It's because your friends will vote you out still. I mean, we saw it in our game. Karen, Kylie, Ashley, you know, Lex, you know, there was friends intermingling in there that they were, they voted each other out. So there's something to be said about not just being friendly and trying to make friends, but trying to almost drive conversations that make people not want to put your name down. Yeah. And I want to, you know, mention the one time you could say one of your friends threw out your name or your thoughts on the mini, right? You hear Zucker throwing out your name. What we see kind of your thought process during that round, but how do you, how do you plan like, oh no, after the round after, how am I going to combat this? And yeah. then just your thoughts watching that episode back as well. Well, I, I think that's another, like, just, I don't, I'm not trying to like toot my own horn here, but like, that's what some people early on we won, toot it. <laughs> That's like what other people didn't do. They heard their name. They're like, they're going home. Like they're, they're out. It's like, okay, Zucker said my name. I'm not surprised. He doesn't have the votes for me. I'm going to kind of let it rock and let it go. I did call him out on him. Like, I know that was hilarious. Just him saying, what? No, I didn't. I'm like, all right. Classic <laughs> Zucker. But, uh, but it's just like, you have to be able to know when to deviate from your original plan and when to 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 do something maybe emotional and go after um the person who said your name and that at that point it wasn't zucker's time to go uh he was still a number for me even though he was saying my name he was good with andrew good with austin like he wanted to go to the end with maddie apparently towards the end we find that out so he had, I had reason to keep him and I wasn't going to throw that all away just because he said my name out once. 
-hmm. even though I was, you know, exile boys. If you, think, exile. if you think you have a chance to win the game or you think you're playing well, someone saying your name should like never bother you. <laughs> I mean, yep. really, let's be honest. It's yeah. it, it, you would expect people of like a high quality of player to, to say your name, maybe not every round or they would say it eventually. So it's, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised when people are surprised by their name getting set. Cause it's like, there's only so many people that could get voted out anyway. So yep. yeah, you just got to roll with it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I think exactly what, I mean, Simmons was saying, like being able to control that emotion and not that you were really emotional in exile, but I think we saw in the end, you know, your emotions, which is very valid, very <laughs> valid, but we don't see that happen in this game. And I think that that also showed. I feel like this I'm is a get voted out. that I was not a part of. I'm like, hold on, McKenna and I are going to go off camera. All right, you guys, no, have no. you guys hash this out. <laughs> Have a nice the difference was I didn't get voted out this time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I I think honestly, if it was a long game or not a long game, but if I was voted out the night before and I got to go to bed, wake up, come back to tribal, I probably would have voted for you, Lily. I'm sorry. No, no, it's not that. I'm saying like even in that moment with Zucker saying your name, I feel like Exile Simmons would have been emotional but i think like you knowing you have these relationships you're right and it is different like you're not getting voted out but that it is just a i don't know your game strengthened with that adaptability that was all yeah. i was saying <laughs> it was there was a nice subtle jab in there i like <laughs> yeah I, I definitely agree there was definitely some things i learned from previous games or my previous game to, to now and that was definitely one of them uh your name's gonna come out there you have to deal with it and you have to be okay with it. And obviously you don't ever want that, but you have to trust your allies and trust your position and trust your game to be able to not let that be the reason you go home. Well, mm -hmm. We talked to Maddie and she says one of the reasons why she didn't decide to like rally the troops at four to cut you was because of exile how you got cut in the last minute and could have an emotional response to the person who cut you so that was another like all right um, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna fight this out at the end i i'm not gonna credit myself on that but i told <laughs> all game long that like i'm pity eric i'm i'm or not pity i'm petty <laughs> I, I get I'm you know if you vote me out I'm not voting for you just messing around with her and she said that she went back and watched the exile final travel she's like holy shit and I'm like <laughs> I know not my best moment but I, I was like yeah I could be petty so I obviously I think she I, I do think she should have voted me out I think if I was sitting at um sitting in the jury and she was or whoever it was whether it was her or Austin that was the reason that I was sitting on the jury I might have respected it a little bit more learning from what happened last time. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh I think I I've, I've thought this since, since you won, but I think you needed to lose exile to win this. I think if you win exile you have zero chance. I think if I win exile I don't play. I was like I mean, he's not here if you won exile. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like yeah, I mean one one of those things. I mm -hmm. I mean I remember your face and my face and feelings when all that went down and in, in exile so yeah it's uh it's it's good for for you especially that things came around full circle so oh, yeah it, it, that's yeah i agree 100 percent Yeah, I mean, that was really my final question, unless these other two beautiful hosts have any, is that watching back, what was, if, was there anything that surprised you watching the episodes, maybe confessionals or conversations that you weren't really aware was happening during the game? There was definitely one early on where it was, it was the very beginning of the game, I think. I, I don't remember which vote it was, but I think I told Andrew something. And Andrew went right away and told it to like Lydia and Karen. And I'm just sitting there watching. I'm like, dude, <laughs> what? What? What's the point of that? Um, 
but again, he was just playing his game and, and getting in with getting in well with them. But I was like, Oh my God, like, come on. Like, I didn't know he did that. Um, you know, some of the conversations at the merge, you know, obviously I wasn't a part of all of them, especially the night before of the merge and the night of the merge. Um, it was interesting to hear back and, and see what people were thinking and some of the confessionals, Maddie's confessionals were pretty funny. Austin's hilarious. Um, you know, Shay had some great confessionals. So a lot of fun to watch back. Um, there was the other part of your question that I was going to say something, but I can't remember. So, okay. I forgot the question myself. So well, I, I, do <laughs> I feel like one, you answered. <laughs> one more question before we go to Facebook. There's something that happens in between mini day one and mini day two. Uh, a little thing that goes down. <laughs> um, to walk us through Maddie coming to you with this advantage that she's had it all day. And then Mr. I can't do puzzles or solve things gets it right away. I mean, you guys can uh, just don't leak my guesses on all the other <laughs> advantages and stuff because they were horrible. Um, but I just remember it was after mini day one. I, I think everyone was kind of taking a little bit of a break mm -hmm. and well-deserved. Well I mean, I was gassed. I was super tired. And I was like, all right, I'm going to step away for a while. I went out, I think I went out to to get a get a drink with my fiance and my buddy. And I'm still messaging, still in the game, whatever. And she just tells me that, like, I can't solve this. And I, I don't remember if I asked to see it or if she just, like, kind of willingly was like, hey, like, what do you think? Um, but I remember sitting in there and all of a sudden I'm looking at my phone. And I'm like, hold on. Like, I know exactly what this is. Like, I think I can get this pretty quickly. And I end up solving it. Um, I, it took me like five to 10 minutes, maybe, um, mostly because I was a little bit distracted, but, <laughs> but, um, I, I didn't tell her right away, but I sent it in and I sent it to Alex and I ended up getting the, and the scramble. And I just remember thinking like, all right, do I tell Maddie right away? I can't play this like right in front of her the next day and like her not be pissed off that I kind of snaked it without telling her. Um, so I ended up did telling her, I, I did told tell her that. Um, and I think that was the right decision, but I, I, I just think that whole sequence was funny how it happened. And especially one of the challenges early on was the word scramble and Maddie was making fun of me afterwards in our chat. Like you took so long, you should have seen your face. You were thinking so hard. I'm like, I know I'm not good at it. And then couple days or a day or two later she was on the other foot <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly if you hadn't won immunity there was it being played absolutely not no I told myself the night before that the only way I play that is if I actually win because of something like that would happen and I get screwed and, and voted out um or people just put multiple votes on me the votes are spread out and I go home yep. I don't think it would have been worth it and I, there's no doubt in my mind that if Zucker keeps his idol or Karen goes home, um, that Zucker would have idled me out at five. He was talking about it the next four votes anyway. I, like, I don't see any world where he doesn't try to idle me out. Nobody knew he had the idol. Um, I yeah. mean, credit to him for keeping it that long. But I, I truly believe that if I didn't end up using that advantage, if I didn't win immunity there, um, I probably would have went home the next vote. And I firmly believe that. All right. So we can go to Facebook. That was my question. All right. First questions from Kylie Kelly. Simmons. God, I cannot wait till I never have to call you that ever again. Simmons, you're a beast. You had such a huge target the whole game and yet we're never truly in trouble. Let's pretend I don't blow shit up at the merge and the big group voted out Maddie or Austin. How would it have changed your approach to the rest of the game? Congratulations to you. I would say it would depend on which one went home, but let's say it doesn't matter. Um, if one of them went home, I would have clinged pretty hard to Andrew and the other one that was there. And I probably would have became Kylie's best friend. I think that would have been my best bet is let me work with Kylie and, and Karen. Um, but I think Karen and I already kind of had at least a little bit of a relationship. I don't know that it would have been able to get any better than what we had. It, it was kind of just like a respect thing where 
we weren't like best friends. We weren't super close, but like we realized we were good for each other. And it was like, okay, that's a mutual understanding. It makes sense. Let's not do anything stupid. Um, so I was, I felt good about Karen. I think it would have been that relationship with Kylie where it's like, Hey, I'll be your other Mike. <laughs> I'll <laughs> be best friends. We can figure this out. Um, and just try to drive the game with her from there. Yeah, it would have been interesting with the shoe on the other foot with Karen. Like you kind of had more of the power here and she was like, I need to work with Simmons. And if you were like, I need Karen to help me like get a couple votes further. I agree. And I think if that was the case, I would have really hated the mini format because I think <laughs> if it was a long game format, I would have had time to talk to other people on the other tribe or not the other tribe, but like talk to some of those other people and like try to maneuver myself into a better spot. Um, and, and I really think I could have if given that opportunity, but that's just not how the game went. It's a good question. Next question is from uh, Michael Zucker. Which Disney character do you think you play the game of Survivor most like? <laughs> Disney adult Mike Simmons. <laughs> That's an impossible question. I don't know. I don't know how to answer this question. Um, how who I play most like? Yep. Ian, what do you think? I was going Aladdin. Aladdin, because he does some bad things a little bit, but they're for good good reasons. Let me ask you guys a question because I'm very curious because I think someone said this to me after our reunion show um, that they thought that I was a, I would be casted as a villain from this season. Was I? Do you think I would be a villain? Absolutely not. Okay. No. Okay. I didn't think so, but I'm like, like I, based like based on. I mean, I guess based on either game, I would still say no. Yeah, I didn't think so, but apparently multiple people on the cast said that. <laughs> I mean, I, I a lot really of people know. didn't do their research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't listen to what any of these. No one knows what they're talking about. I just don't know. I mean, to be honest, I really don't know too many people that got on this season that would have been cast as villains, like Kylie, Kelly, and Lex. But like, that's just because they are the most villainous out. I mean, I still don't. I think we would have just had eighteen heroes and there's not like i mean again heroes and survivor is like a horrible trope because they don't really exist because everyone's playing survivor but i think given that analogy i would say for me going back to zucker's question would yeah. be beast from beauty and the beast because he's a villain on the outside but then when you get to know him deep down in he's <laughs> oh there you go <laughs> full circle wait i have a question was it Somebody, we were talking in an exit and they said, oh, I looked at Simmons right it before. It was Sarah. Yeah. It was Sarah. And she was like, I saw he really liked Disney. So she put on a Disney. Did you even realize that she had? She, respect to her because that was an absolutely incredible move. By her. <laughs> that was the first thing that I said to her when we got on the call was like, is that a Disneyland sweatshirt? Like, you like, you like Disney? Like, I don't know. Like that, that's just kind of how. I, I I work in these games like I just anything that I can try to talk to somebody about like I'll go for it and that was just like easy right in my face um and I mean honestly I it is it's interesting because I didn't know if I could end up playing this game with Sarah later on and that's the only reason why that I didn't vote Mike out before her because I knew that I couldn't go with Mike to the merge, especially with what happened at that swap. And I was really contemplating if Sarah would ditch me at a merge situation to go back to her old tribe and whoever her friends were over there, because we had some good conversations. And I think she could have been really good for my game if she would have been like, I don't want to say loyal to me, but like at least willing to work with me when we got to that spot where she could help me get relationships with other people at the merge. Yeah. Um, so just interesting that she came up because I was interested in trying to work with her. I just wasn't sure. There's not not enough time. Timing isn't right. Yeah. 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 Next question is from Andrew. Simmons, I know you've seen a fair, a fair few of Survivor seasons now since the last time we played together. Which winner would you compare yourself to? You did an amazing <laughs> one and I'm proud to call you a bro. So another comparison here. I love you, Andrew. I 
I, I don't know. Um, which isn't a good answer. I, I don't know that many seasons that well, or at least I forget. I, I've probably seen like 12 seasons, maybe. Um, shoot. If it says anything, one of my favorite players is JT. So I don't think I really play like him, but I like JT. Okay, so pick. I I think JT here. isn't bad in this situation no, because you have like Steven, uh, who's like Maddie and comes in second place. JT, Challenge Beast, wins the season. I think, I think Maddie is Taj and Steven is Austin. <laughs> I mean, whatever. Placement doesn't matter, but you're just yeah. Next to the... um, Austin Fishback. Austin Um, I was gonna say, uh, pick pick someone from the new like new era for winners that you feel. I mean, there. I don't think really any of them are like super close to your style of play, but just pick one that you think would be the closest. So, Erica, Marianne, Gabler, or. Uh, jam jam i mean you're trying to get me to say gabler but i'm probably gonna have no, to go I'm definitely jam. not i'm just asking I, probably jam jam just because of his alliance down the stretch and um maybe i don't know he's a little bit more outgoing than i am obviously but i think that's who people were comparing you to because they all posted about it in 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 the chat of who of the fumo swap three is um part of the uh the tika three and i think you were jam jam austin was carolyn and maddie was carson yeah absolutely <laughs> that checks out that checks out oh so you- and this was before jam jam had won either so yeah. all right so i'll take that, I'll take that. <laughs> i don't even remember I, I have such a bad memory like i really don't remember some of the other seasons that well so We'll go with that because it's most recent. Okay, so bad memory is why you're late to things all the time. Got it. <laughs> uh, all right, next question. Where did is- that slip in? The shade. <laughs> A little personal, huh? <laughs> I have to. I have to. He was right on time just noting this for the exit interview. Actually, early. <laughs> I was late. Um, all right, Simmons. Next question is from Greg. Sorry. Um, Simmons, you are unquestionably the DCP GOAT. A top tier game in exile somehow made even better in all stars. No questions. You are elite. Go apply for CBS Survivor. Bro, I was like, where's the question here? <laughs> no question. Appreciate it, Greg. Those are two kind of words. And I, I'm gonna reiterate this because I said it. I remember I said it at Final Tribal Council. It just it means a lot to hear like people like Greg and even the people on our season say stuff like that to me because I respect how much that these people like love Survivor and watch so much of it that like their opinion to me matters. So like people voting for me at Final Tribal Council, you know, telling me that I like Kylie saying like, oh, you're a beast, like Greg saying all those nice things. Like it does mean a lot and and it's meaningful because it's coming from people that understand the game and and have like, to me, an opinion that matters. So I just want to say that again. You were my biggest surprise in exile of how you played and how well you did because it seemed like you were Ian's friend he got you to he suckered you into playing and it's like all right and and then you go out there and kill it so it, it your game is is a master class I feel yeah uh next question is from Kyle another person you've had a chance to meet in real life well Greg too I guess but um first question is at the final four you are considering voting for maddie could you explain your thinking behind that a little more okay so yeah i was thinking about keeping zucker over maddie and voting maddie out for i guess two reasons maybe three i still thought that i could beat zucker i guess the ultimate reason why i didn't do it was because I was worried and it was and honestly it was the same reason why I was okay with voting uh Austin Moorhead out of exile was because I was worried that all of his former tribe mates were on the jury. And I, I sometimes just don't know how people are gonna vote. People sometimes say, Oh, you're the last one of our tribe to make it. You made it to the final three, like you know, whatever. But that was one reason that I didn't do it. 
Um, another reason why I was thinking about doing it was because I did think Maddie played obviously a really good game. There's not enough credit that I can give to her. I mean, <clears throat> she's a great player. She proved what she can do. Um, if she felt like she had any, anything to prove, like she obviously did. And I think, you know, a lot of people didn't see her game as it was happening, especially, you know, I was the one that got to see it. I saw everything happening. I saw, you know, I knew her game. I knew how good it was. And that's why I was like, mm, do I really want her to sit next to me at the final three? Um, and then the third reason would be to do what the other two couldn't do. And it was vote out one of the, one of us three. And that would have been my biggest push to do it was so I could sit at the end and say, I voted out my number one ally. That's something that Austin and Maddie didn't do. And that's why I should win this game. I thought that that would have been a really good pitch. And I think Maddie would have been great in the jury for me. But, you know, her and I had many conversations about let's have a fair fight at the end. Let's do it. And competition sometimes gets the best of me. And it's like, all right, she thinks she can beat me. Let's go see what happens. Um, and, you know, obviously I thought that she could win the game. Um, and, you know, during final tribal, she showed that she should win the game. Um, she played a game good enough to win. So, I took that as a little bit more of a challenge and it was a little bit more fun. I mean, had Andrew been in that fourth spot and not Zucker, that's where the the difficulty comes down. I mean, he also said it in his final tribal council question, where was I placing? It, <laughs> and you said three. McKenna, you know, you're still playing the game at final tribal council. I know, I know. <laughs> I know, but, but in all honesty, like, all honesty, if it was me, Andrew, Austin, and Maddie at Final Four, I would have had a tough time figuring out what I was going to do. And I'm not saying what I'm going to do now because I don't know what I would have done. And looking back on it, it's easy to say, no, I wouldn't have done it. Or yes, I would have done it. I don't know. Um, I, I wouldn't have wanted to vote out Andrew. So when I did say Final Three, I... I might've kind of meant it. I, I never really planned to, I, I didn't look that far in advance early on when we had our four that we would all be there at that time. So, you know, as it got closer and closer, I saw that realization maybe coming that like, okay, I'm going to have to decide what goes on. Um, yeah, I'm just glad that I didn't have to make that decision because I, wa I wasn't going to vote Austin out again. I promised myself I'm not doing that again. I think that's why I lost before, or at least a reason why I didn't have a chance to win. Um, and I didn't want to vote Maddie out, and I didn't want to vote Austin or Andrew out. So I don't know. I, I think that's a, a decision that, again, you play what's in front of you, and I'm lucky enough that it didn't happen. But if it did, I would have, you know, come up with reasoning to do whatever it is that I decided to do and would have dealt with the consequences regardless. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. That, that's, I've asked that question like five million times. dollar question. Time, I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. You, no one will ever know. Because as much as I want to say, like there's, there's an easy decision there. I, maybe there is to some people, but like, there is something to be said about the relationships you have. And I, I know I said you can't make emotional decisions, but once you get to final four, I firmly believe that I could beat anybody out there. I thought that I could beat anybody that was in the entire game. And that's just maybe too much confidence, but I wanted to prove to myself that I could get to final three. I could get the final tribal council. And all I wanted to do coming to this game was give my pitch to the jury to win the game. It's what I felt that I was robbed of doing in the last game. And it's what I wanted to do from day one to see what I could do. I didn't know how I was going to react at, at final tribal. I didn't know if I was going to be any good. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't rehearse anything like Maddie. I didn't, I, I didn't think about it too much when we were in the waiting room. I was just like, I'm just going to go in there. I'm going to say what's on my mind. Talk like I'm talking to you guys um, and just have a conversation about it and see how it goes. Cause again, that's kind of like a challenge of this game is, getting to the end and not only getting to the end, but getting to explain what you did and answer people's questions, not only with the truth, but in a way that gets people to want to vote for you. So like I said, maybe it's not the truth. Maybe it is, but I still think that you're playing the game at the highest level. When you get to the end, that's when you really have to put on this facade that maybe you played a better game than you did. Maybe people are going to call you out on it, but maybe they won't. Maybe they'll say, Oh damn, he did all that. Mm -hmm. so I think 
And I think you saw that with Lex's first question of, you know, who who do you think is going to vote for you? And my dumb ass is put See, my hand. Honestly, I respect that. For me, yeah. you just, I would have loved you to just be like, not even put down your hand, just keep it up. And that would have got me more on, on your side as a, as a jury member for I, me. It, well, that's the thing too, is I, in my head, my reasoning behind it was a couple of things. It was, I think I played the best game in my opinion. So in my opinion, if the jury's doing what they're supposed to do and vote for the person who played the best game, I think I should get the votes. Do I think I'm going to get every vote? No, but if you're voting strictly on who you think played the best game, I think I should get everyone's vote because I think I played the best game. Mm -hmm. And I think watching seasons of Survivor that I have watched, it's like you get the final tribal council and there's a lot of people in the jury saying like, own your game, be confident in your game. Like people lose games because they weren't confident. They weren't owning it. And it was like, okay, I'm going to be confident in my game unapologetically. And yeah, were there some faces when I put my hands up? I'm sure there was. I could feel it when I was doing it. I was like, I know that people are probably making faces, but like, what do you want me to do? Sit here and say that like, I don't think I should win. So I, that's just maybe some rationale and some irrational confidence behind it. But I loved it. But <laughs> No, I think, I think that question being first allows, like just because Lex happened to go first um you know you haven't had anybody else as long it's it's fully based on what you think and you have no idea what the jury's thinking so yeah i mean i i would have put my hand up for had i played the game that you did or even if i was maddie or austin i would have just raised my hand who fucking cares i mean just show that you at least it just shows that you're confident what you did like no one no one thought that they anybody in the final three was like a goat or anything i think that was like well aware that that was not the case for anybody so yeah i mean just be just be confident so yeah kyle's second question not game related uh what's your permanis order oh kyle went to permanis a month ago for the first time and won't shut the fuck up about it uh i get the black angus it's like a little steak sandwich okay so let's try kyle um Okay, next question's from Maddie. Um, this is a little bit of a long one here. So, Simmons, as those votes were being read at Final Tribal Council, all I wanted to, all I wanted was to see your name. You know this a hundred times over already, but I have so much respect for your game and you as a human. We committed the whole way to a fair fight at the end. All I wanted was a chance to share my story with the jury. Thank you for honoring that, even when it was tough. i It meant we could both win in our own ways. First, three questions. First one is, if I'd cut you at four or any time, really, is there a world where you would have voted for me as a jury member? Or would, would the spiteful slash petty, vengeful slash vindictive Simmons have taken over? Um, I think it depends when. I think if it was right before tribal council, I might not have voted for her. Um, but if there was some time in between where I could have actually like had a chance to relax for a second, I probably would have voted for her. Um, because like I said, the reason I would have voted out Maddie was to say I did what these two couldn't do. And I voted out my number one ally because I think that they were playing a great game and no one else was going to do it. If Maddie stood up there at final tribal council and said that, or on the flip side, if Austin did that and said that. I would have had a hard time not voting for him because in my eyes, that would have been the biggest play of the game at that point. Um, someone making a big move like that and finishing the game. Um, so I, I do think I would have probably given my vote to whoever led the charge. If it was one of those two, now if it was like Zucker or Karen, I would have been like, damn it. Like, how'd you guys let that happen? Um, but if it was Maddie or Austin that claimed that move that they drove it, I probably would have voted for him um second question i know you think i'm the most hilarious person in this game what moments of ours that the viewers didn't see made you one laugh the hardest and two roll your eyes the biggest so lots I mean, of i mean there's probably multiple times where i rolled my eyes at her but i mean i think the funniest things were 
anytime I, I guess I use some kind of slang that sh- I guess maybe up in Canada that they don't. She's like, uh, she would always go, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> what? She's like, what does that mean? I'm like, oh, okay. And I'd explain to her what it meant. Um, and she'll use a really big word and you have to do the same. Yeah, those Canadian <laughs> words. Um, I did. I mean, she wants to take all this credit for these logos and stickers. Let's be clear here. I sent the first logo in. And she she made I hers was a little bit better, but I started it. <laughs> I just want that to be known. People talking about my social game. All right. I was sending stickers and, and logos out. <laughs> yeah, to repair for a, a vote that you left her out of. Yeah. I, I think I, that's my funniest moment of you two, just that first interaction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, I'll tell you whatever. She's like, go. You're like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just felt like I was in trouble and I was like, all right. <laughs> but I did feel like at that time, I was like, all right, she's not like super, super mad. She was mad, but like, I was like, I can figure out a way around this. But I, in that moment, I was like, I don't know what to say. Because <laughs> at that point, she didn't know Austin that way. She didn't know that me and Austin were close. She didn't realize that until, I mean, I don't know when specifically, but I kept that pretty quiet. And then eventually it, it came up in conversation, but it was at least a couple of votes in. So at that point, I wasn't going to say, oh, I'm really close to Austin because I would have felt like that would have went worse and she could have taken that information and went um, somewhere else if she wanted to. So, yeah, she <laughs> she, uh, she got me pretty good there. But um, there were a lot of moments that were funny. And and I, I mean, I think when I snaked that advantage from her, when I told her about it, just she was sitting there and I could tell that she was like, I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> You, but it was pretty funny I, it was nice having someone that you could just like kind of fall back on and talk to and know that they're not gonna go tell everyone everything um and, and that's a connection that we made that wasn't pre-existing or so, anything like that so it was completely in in within the game and anybody could have done it if they really tried but um it's just I guess the connection that that we made All right. And then her final question, we're just going to assume that you have won immunity at final three. It's now a final two. Who is sitting beside you? Austin. Sorry, Maddie. I think I told her that the other day. Promise pregame. You made the promise to Austin in your head pregame if he was there. I said, if Austin is there, I'm going to the finals with Austin. It lost. I keep saying it lost me the game. It didn't actually lose me the game because there's a very high chance Lily beats him in that challenge anyway, and I still go home or whatever. But I, it didn't help me voting him out. At least it didn't help me any. So I said I wasn't going to make that mistake again, and hmm, turns out it was a good one. <laughs> All right, and our final question is from Carrie. Simmons, would you rather have to say all of your sentences backwards for a week or have to communicate through charades for a week? Charades. I know a little bit of sign language, so I could I could help out. I could do a little bit. Right. I don't know if that counts, but all right, Carrie, you heard it here first. Charades. I can't even talk backwards. <laughs> well, she's right there. Oh uh, yeah, she's sitting off screen. Oh, is she? <laughs> Sign language is cheating. Uh, she says sign language is cheating. Okay, okay. I, can, I can try to act it out. It wouldn't be great, but better than me just saying words backwards because I wouldn't be able to. <laughs> All righty. Um, time oh, that, for I mean, that's it on yeah, that's it on Facebook. So I time can for Mr. Positivity over. here. Uh, <laughs> for the Alex final time. Question um reflect on your game and name one positive moment that you took away from your all-stars experience blah 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 the people yes we know (laughs) yes the people were so great (laughs) that wasn't sarcastic they were great um I I really think and I mentioned this a little bit earlier I, I was very I guess proud and just happy that I finally got a chance at final tribal council to do what I've wanted to do since exile. And it's see how I would react in that situation, challenge myself to be able to, to win the game and, you know, vocally be able to um, speak to it and, and earn people's vote. 
Um, that was something that I like, again, I, I felt robbed of in exile. And ever since then, I was like, I always had that question in my head of what, what would I have done? How would I have done it? Would I have been good at it? Like, I, I didn't know. And I wanted to answer that question. And I think I did a pretty good job, you know, watching it back last night. Um, I didn't answer everything great, but I was at least proud of the way that I was able to to communicate and own my game and be confident in it. And, you know, if people didn't want to vote for me because they thought that I was being arrogant or too confident, I'd live with that because that's, that's kind of who you have to be. And that's, at least for me, that's who I am. And, you know, I, you know, I hate this, but I play call, I played college sports. Like I'm the probably the most competitive person a lot of people will meet. I want to win everything. Like I want to win everything. And, you know, just being confident in yourself is something that I've had to learn a lot in my life, you know, whether it's in basketball or college or whatever it was that, you know, you go as far as you take yourself. So I was going to try to do whatever I could to to boost myself and claim my game. And if people didn't like it, then all right, I would have lived with it. And that would have been like, okay, I, I understand. I can see why people didn't want to vote for me, but I'm going to do that. And I'm going to explain myself and hopefully they respect it. All right, Ian. I was going to say something about the, oh, the competitive. Yeah, we're playing fucking grandmas at the bowling league and Mike's getting pissed about scores and scores don't even matter. We bowl well enough that they literally don't matter our record. <laughs> and Mike's texting me like, dude, this person has 40 points above their average. I'm like, bro, who cares? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, well, first of all, before my questions, again, as I like to comment on all my past people that I post because I got to see their their game the first time or possibly even the second time and the third time, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just, uh, like I mentioned earlier, super sad for me to watch you. I mean, I guess I play in the, the part of the game, so it doesn't really matter to me that you are upset with the game, just that you are upset in general um, about Exile. So having to watch you do that sucked, and uh, I'm glad that you were able to come back. And, you know, because people, people remember winners. Like, it's crazy because – like Karen was really targeted for nothing in this game, but being a winner, I mean, for the most part. And like that, that is, it puts you in a, a small group of people that have won these games. And now you're our only returning season winner. So yeah, I mean, can't, can't say enough about the game you played. I did say that you were going to win on before the merge. Uh, and, then I, and then I changed it. Yeah, because everyone made me feel like shit. And so I changed it. What are we playing? Friend Viber? Yeah, I mean, I guess I wasn't even playing and I was getting accused of playing Friend Viber. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, just super, super impressed. I mean, obviously, when I brought you into the community, I thought that, you know, you would do well. But you and Austin both have have always exceeded my expectations. So you guys have five top four or higher placings between the th between the two of you i mean it's it's pretty uh it's pretty impressive so. i'll talk about austin after your question here because i think <laughs> okay uh first question um replacing someone from this season on exile with a person from X okay you're going to replace someone from exile on all stars with someone from exile, but you can't pick someone on prod. So you can't pick Lily. Oh. Or if you, you do, I need another answer. <laughs> you can't pick Greg and you can't pick John. I wouldn't have picked Greg because Greg would have snaked me. I know that hundred <laughs> um, percent. I would have liked to play with Lily so I could make it up to her. <laughs> Um, Yikes. <laughs> but, oh, Lily, Lily will try and vote you out. Don't do it. She probably would. Hey, she should. Second time's a charm. <laughs> um, okay, besides those two, I would say let's take out Zucker and give me... <laughs> Jim is my pick. <laughs> Wild Bill. 
Bill. Yeah. Love Bill. And then I want just for fun, I want to take out Austin and bring in Mackenzie. <laughs> let's let's just let's just do it all. I, I want to show. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> I feel like you guys would have worked together in this game. I mean, obviously, people from maybe their own seasons were gonna work together somewhat, but I mean, yeah, if they follow the same it. path, Mackenzie swaps to your tribe. So yeah, yeah. Give me Bill. I love Bill. Love that. All right, and then I think this is what you thought my question was gonna be first, but now I need your DCP Mount Rushmore. That can include All Stars because everyone knows what happens. Yes, that can include everything in All Stars. So. True. Okay. So I I've said this before. I don't know all of the seasons super well, so take it with a grain of salt. That maybe I'm missing somebody very important. I don't know. Maddie did all All Stars, so <laughs> she prefaced it saying, "I only really know the All Stars people." So. And people people have just done people on their original season. Some people didn't even remember their names. So <laughs> I, I'll do a little bit of a hybrid. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Karen because I she's a winner and she did really well in an all star season. I'm going to do. And you can put yourself. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to do Karen. I'm going to do Morgan. I'm going to do myself and Austin Moorhead. And I want to say something about Austin because put some respect on his name. There's no doubt he's like one of the top three, top four, whatever you want to do, players ever play DCP, <laughs> online survivors. You can't convince me otherwise. If you want to say... And Ian, he can't win. He doesn't play a game to win. You're wrong. And anybody that can get to the end this many times, like, come on. <laughs> like, that's unbelievable. I mean, unbelievable. So credit to Austin. I think he had, you know, you can say what you want about his final tribal council. I thought it was actually pretty good. I enjoyed the way he put up a fight and and tried to explain his game. And anybody that discounted him at final tribal council, I question their their thought process on, you know, what game they played um, or how they perceive the game. Because anybody that can get to the final three and has played multiple games before, has finished top three, top four multiple times, like you have to, to have to give them credit. And I think Austin got a little too much slander, especially at final tribal. Um I think he played a good enough game to to be there. He had a good enough chance to win. Like he he's a good player, and I I think he just deserves that respect. So I think That's without cool. Austin, your three doesn't work as well as it does because of the points that were made in like the Karen questioning of you couldn't be the mouthpiece, so you needed Austin to be the mouthpiece, and he can claim those moves because he did say it. So I yeah. I think. You three just like worked beautifully because you all had your roles. Well, it, yeah, and to a to a point, we were all somewhat similar. Where none of us were just like running around blowing smoke up everybody's, you know, <laughs> uh, trying to just like make moves to make moves. We were all thinking in the same way of like at Final Tribal Council. It sounded like I tried to discredit Austin by saying like, "Yeah, those are the way that everyone was supposed to go." To an extent, that's true, but he still did it. But it was in the it was in the best interest of all three of us. Like, yeah, you know, the way that it went, Austin was saying those names, but I think he was also saying it with a mind of me and Maddie, like in his mind, thinking, like, okay, what's the best route for us three? What's the easiest for us three? And that's why I was like, hey, I'm good with all these votes. They're perfect for what I want. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't trying to discredit him at Final Tribal. I was just trying to maybe get a couple extra points <laughs> and yeah some shade i threw earlier he threw it back so yeah i have said in in the past austin's first two games i, I don't think he played a game to win but this this time around i've said it in i don't know you saw it was close i said it in well yeah but we don't know i said it in past in uh past exits on this season like i think everybody in the finals had a chance i think that you all played 
differently enough. You all had something to say that was your own. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't complain about anybody's Mount Rushmore, so you could put whoever the hell you wanted on there. So, um, that's all I have. And, uh, yeah, just like I told you that first night of bowling, congratulations on, uh, on winning. Welcome to the winner's circle. Lily, let's have dinner. All three of us. Oh, <laughs> bye, McKenna. <laughs> all right. Well, we like to end every exit with the same question. And that is, and I'm going to caveat this. You cannot say winning or winner. Have to be a little creative. Damn, Sum yeah. up your game in one word. What would it be and why? I don't know if this sums up my game, but proud. I'm proud of the way that I played. I'm proud of how I was able to challenge myself and speak at tri final tribal council. Um, and just watching it back, staying with my alliance from day one again. Um, and, you know, I don't think I made any rookie mistakes, as I as I like to say. Um, so I'm just I'm just proud. I know I didn't play a perfect game. I didn't play the best game of all time, but. I played my game and I knew that if I played my game, I think I had a good chance to win. So I'm just proud of that. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mike. And congratulations once again. This has been the exit interviews for all stars. We are all done. So go back, rewatch the season, do all the things. We might have some more content coming your way. Uh, depending on when this is posted. So uh, stay tuned and we will see you next season. Goodbye.